Hey guys, welcome back to King's Outdoor Life. As you can see behind me, pool is finished. So thanks for tuning in to part two. If you missed part one, go check it out. But it's now first day of November. We've got the leaf cover on. I just took it off to make sure everything was working right. We'll cover it back up so the leaves don't fill it in. But check out this video and I've got the time lapse ready. This would have made it too long, so next few days we'll load the time lapse. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already, click like and subscribe. So once you have your trench dug, and you want to get it as level as possible, obviously, with the laser level, get the trench exactly level, and then you come in and you put this base material. We're using a rock sand. It's actually a ground-up concrete is what I used as this filler material. It's a compactable material that you can you can see the steps there. You can put it in place, pack it down to the right height, and step it down as needed. Once this is packed in, it's not going anywhere. We're using water to, to wet it down. You put in a couple of inches, tap it down, pack it down, and keep going. So you can see here we're raking it down to the right level, and then we'll tap, 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 water it, tap, 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 water it, and so on. So this is solid, solid, solid but water can run through it. So water will not sit on top of this layer and freeze. You can see I've got a plastic layer underneath. It's, a, it's not truly really plastic. It's a, a layer that the water can go through, but it will not allow the dirt to come up through the bottom of this base material. So you have that plastic material down first. Then you put in this base material, wreck it down a couple inches deep, soak it down, pack it down, and you'll have a really 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 good base for your rock retaining wall and again this trench is 24 inches wide and then you've got this you got a 12 inch um excuse me you got 12 inch wide block so you got six inches on each side of this wall and then you're going to get a really good base to, to pack this on so you can see there why i spun the camera around there but anyway you can see here the way we're doing this load a base pack it down water it down and, and keep going and make sure it's all level at each step just like laying the foundation for our house these are eight inch blocks you can step each step up each level as you get where you can you know, get less blocks it'll be buried underground if you will but you'll step that up in the eight inch levels as the block goes and all this is going to be shot with a laser and make sure it's perfectly level I told him I weighed more, I could pack pack it better, so he handed me the temper and I showed him how it was done. So we spent all morning getting the footing just right and putting all the base material in. We got a little over 24 inch wide, you know, this way wide, and about 12 inches deep of this compactable material. That way the water can go through it, but you know, the water uh, is not truly a drain. So now we're seeing the first course of block here. He's got that string line, as you can see. He's got his level out, and he's just making sure, going very slowly here on these first few blocks to be sure you get, get that bottom course right, level, straight, plumb, all those things. If the first course is not right, nothing above it will be. So spend a lot of time getting this ready, and now we it should go... Not real quick, but quicker from here up. All right, so a little later in the day here, you can see we're coming up on our fourth course. You can't tell that by looking, but this is the fourth course of these block. And you can see the pipe behind him there. That pipe runs all the way under these walls to, as a drain, so water can go through the rock down into that perforated pipe. That perforated pipe comes to a drain right there. See the drain at the bottom of that first course? So it's actually the second course, but it'll be the first course above ground. So all the water can drain from this way and the other way. All the water will come to this low spot. So you've got rock, and you've got another, each layer is two layers of block filled with rocks. So all this area here is filled with rock. Two layers of block, put down the geofabric or geotech mesh, put down more rock, and you fill all those cells, all those holes in those blocks with rock. And then do another layer, fill it, another layer, and so on. So every two layers, you have that geotech fabric to hold all this area together. And that's what makes this rock wall so strong. So what we're doing is pouring a footing all the way around the 
pool. This is where the pool gets its strength. It's basically about 18 inches wide and five inches deep. It goes all the way around the pool. All the way up through there, all the way to the other end. I had to bring the tractor right here to fill in this side. Also, while he's here on this first pour, he poured the pad for the shadow makes it look bad. This is the pad for the pump and filter, whatever else goes back here. So that's when we built the retaining wall up to that point to hold that. And then now we're working on the footer all the way around. So we'll continue this process. So this footer goes all the way around the pool, and again, this is where the pool really gets its strength, apparently. I had no idea. This is a brand new process to me, so this is all new to me. But there's a little lip, about a four inch lip in this steel wall there that that really locks that pool in place. Once we get all the way around, then they come into this shallow end, which is the tanning ledge, and then the, the steps go all the way across the pool here. So you step down under the tanning ledge, and then it goes to the two steps down into the rest of the pool. So they're pouring the whole bottom of that tan ledge to lock it all together, and then they're getting buckets full, scooping it out, and pouring it into the steps. And then from where they're standing now, all the way to the top of that wall there will be filled with rock. So it was like, I mean, on nearly a half a dump truck load of rock went into this hole here. So about seven and a half yards of uh, concrete total on this pour. So here you can see the pool crete going in. Pool crete is comes in bags. It's some sort of I don't know exactly what it is. It's a pre-mixed deal where they add water. I muted the video, but he's mixing it in a mixer, like a concrete mixer in the background, and they mix it up to the right consistency. Uh, they know exactly what to do, of course, and they spread it just like mud or concrete or whatever. They got the their tool there like a trowel that they spread it to the exact depth. They run a string to get the exact depth there so they know, you know how, how high exactly where it needs to be. So where he's kneeling is a tanning ledge and you can see the slopes there. He had already done that. And it was a really cool process to watch them spread this pool crete. So this is the pool crete. You know, they, you can see they finished spreading it at this point. I thought it was really cool how they did this. They they know how to do it. They do the slopes first, start in the deep end, work their way around. Then they did the tanning ledge, and then they did the shallow end. And then they did that long slope all the way down to the deep end. And they did the deep end, and they left there's a bucket there. You can see the bucket is so they can put a pump down in there if it rains and pump out any water. And they got their ladder to climb themselves out. When you do something a few hundred times, I guess you know how to do it the best way. Well, today's the big day. It's concrete pour day. So this is my last chance to give you a rundown of all that we've done here. So as you can see, we tore out the steps, put the new steps in. But as far as beneath the concrete, what you never see are things like this. You know, this downspout right here. We're going to move this downspout over on this side of the house and put it in that black corrugated pipe and we've run a, a pipe underneath to this same here pipe here to catch a catch basin for all the water that'll come this downspout so all this water will come here and go out a pipe under the wall out the back so that leads you to slope how does the water need to go so here all the water comes from here and slopes down into this drain this thing you see here is a drain that goes all the way out so everything to the right of the drain drains to the drain and everything to the left from the pool drains down to the drain and it goes out the back of the wall and this drain goes all the way around here with well, the same thing everything from the pool going to slope down to that drain and drain away from the pool and out the back here we had to do a little customing because Here's where our septic line comes out from the house. And this was the old foundation and everything. We had to do a little step up. So this is almost like a little retaining wall, if you will. The 
concrete steps up about eight, nine inches. So we can have a little seat to sit on, put a little couch there, something like that. It's a little custom thing there. But here, all the concrete will come to this drain. We'll catch it in that gray drain, go out the wall against the house. So no water going back under the house and all the water drains away from the pool and the concrete goes right up against those blocks. If you can see this, this is where the, what do you call that, handle or rail to get down the pool will be. But notice that copper wire. The copper wire goes all the way around and attaches to the pool and anything metal coming down from the pool. So you're attached to the pool every so many feet, attached to any rails or any diving board or anything like that. That is to ground the pool. If you have any power that somehow gets into your pool from some sort of leakage somewhere, you know, as weird as it sounds, it happens, that electricity will go to this ground wire and we've got it going all the way around behind the garage where we'll ground the pump. The pump has to be grounded as well. It'll all be grounded together. Check out the white styrofoam here. If you can see that, that is the like a curb that's the coping it's called that's your forms to hold your concrete around the pool so the concrete will come all the way up to the top of the white forms there and those forms are wired in you know as you can see that wire that they've attached that and the boards hold it up it's wired to it and then once if those concrete forms are taken off they'll just snip that wire and there'll be one little hole you can we'll be able to see where the wire goes up in, the, in there but that wire back here in the concrete will stay so all that was done ahead of time you can see down in the pool they've got the pool crate is poured all that's ready to go he didn't put the liner in i think he wanted to wait until everything else is done to risk the uh, liner getting punctured or something by our i guess working in and around it I had to put an extension on this because of this high concrete here. I had to put an extension on the skimmer. I've got the light in the corner there. And these guys, they've got a bucket that they leave down in there and they pour everything around that. And that way any water, if it rains, will go down in that hole. That's the lowest point. And then they can put their little pump in there to pump out that water from the whole pool. So you can see the corners there. That white styrofoam goes in the corner be sure that's where the liner will pull up against that make a nice round corner Let's see what else i'll show you oh do a little hole here for my porch is going to come here and i'll have posts so it gives us a good solid foundation for the for those my plumbing for my bathroom is going to be on the inside and all the plumbing back here around back to hide the pump and everything around behind the building so i can show you here where this drain goes all the way out and i'll also show you the drain pipe drain all the water from up from the pool so big day today haven't measured it 20 25 yards of concrete so a little uh apprehension there about how that goes but uh i hope it goes well all right hopefully the time lapse works and hopefully we'll get some uh, good footage of pouring the concrete well because of the proximity of the road and the concrete truck and not bringing a concrete truck down the driveway and not being able to get a concrete truck everywhere we needed it, we had to get a pump truck, which I guess is not that big a deal, just an added expense, but you tell the folks at the concrete plant that you're gonna pump the concrete, and it costs a little more because it's a pump mix instead of a regular mix. I guess it's a little thinner or doesn't have as big a rocks or, or whatever. But anyway, so we are pumping the concrete. Uh, Corey there, a friend of mine from childhood, is uh, the pump truck operator and he was kind enough to come out and do this for me and uh, of course i paid him uh, but anyway i don't know if i got a deal or not maybe i'll go back and find out did he give me a good deal or charge me more because he's a childhood friend but anyway so you can see he's the one driving the the hose there and he knows exactly where to put this concrete and how much and he's working together with the guys that are finishing the concrete to know okay a little more here stop putting it there so they can work that down and then come over here so he's giving them time to catch up over there while he's just kind of coming around this way and, and going on and, and making more 
over here. So he really never stops the flow. He just keeps going and they're working it in in place. And if they get a spot where up, oh, we need a little more over here. He can, he's watching them out of the corner of his eye and he can see them working around as they're screening it. He'll stop where he is and squirt a little more up there where they are. The guy in the red shirt, he's making sure he's pushing it down in this concrete goes under the lip of that pool and make sure he didn't, he gets all the air bubbles out of that form for, to form that nice smooth edge around the pool there. That's what he's punching that for. So at this point, we're down to the last trucks. There's two trucks. There's nine yards of concrete per truck. So 18 yards of concrete at this point. And you can see they've got it all smoothed down and trialed down and floated. There's a little step where we can put a couch or something up there that turned out really nice. And they've got it all nice and smooth to this point here. So this remaining area here, we're estimating how much concrete we need. I've measured it out to tell the guy, hey, we don't need another full truck. We're only going to need maybe, you know, six yards. So showing you there, here comes the last truck to back up. There's the pump truck. You can see the yellow thing there behind that truck is the pump machine and the, the concrete truck will back up to hit and keep the concrete flowing into that pumper while we're working out over here getting it fixed so guys are getting ready we're going to put this last truck out these guys are climbing down in the pool and they're finishing the edges with their floats there so all right get ready for the rest of it so when we did our calculations we figured we needed another six yards or so nine yards comes on a truck well I call the concrete plant and he says, oh, we've already got the truck loaded and on the way. You got nine more yards coming. And I was like, great. So as they continue to do this here, you can see Corey put it out there in perfect form. I have already formed up the back area under my lean to I built. If you didn't see that video, check out that video. And I'm going to have extra concrete. So might as well use it, right? Got to pay for it. Good news is I had a place to put it. Bad news is I had to pay for a couple of extra yards of concrete, but it worked out great. I was able to form up that area and put concrete where I parked my mowers and my side-by-side, -side, you know, Polaris, whatever you want to call it. It's a Yamaha Rhino. But anyway, where I park it is now nice concrete. So here we're just finishing up the rest of the way around the pool. You got one guy floating the edge over there. The rest of these guys getting it going over here on this last side. And as soon as we're finished with this, I'll be over here putting in my lean-to floor. The view from the back door, looking good. Turned out so nice. Here we are the next day. All the ter concrete turned out so nice, but you have to saw expansion joints. The old saying is, concrete guys don't necessarily like the saying, but the saying is all concrete will crack, but you cut the expansion joints to be sure it cracks in the right places. Again, concrete guys don't necessarily like that saying, but it kind of is true. If you've ever poured any concrete or had any concrete poured for you, it all seems to crack. So you make these joints so it can expand and contract with the weather. And he cuts it perfectly to the corners there, each corner and each angle. Everywhere you think it might crack, you cut an expansion joint. And you do those off all corners and make straight lines with them. They did the chalk lines and chalked all those lines beforehand, measured it out where you've got, they're evenly dispersed down each side and line up and they were very detailed on where they made those expansion joints. So this cut line goes about an inch and a half deep and the saw's got little wheels on it where it just rolls right in the perfect line. I was upstairs working and they got ahead of me. They got ready for this a lot quicker than I was expecting. This is the moment we've all been waiting for, the liner. So they had to vacuum out all the junk that was in the pool, all those leaves, all the um, styrofoam from those curb forms. And once they got all that out, they were ready to unfurl this liner. And it has got the exact way it has to go. These steps here got little click-in pieces, so it's obvious where that goes. So we got a guy there clicking those steps in. And we got to make sure it gets stretched in all the right places and everything gets put in nice and tight and there's only one way it'll fit and it has to fit just right it has to fit tight so these uh, liners have a clip in um i don't know what you call it but anyway they click in to that track up there so they go through and click it in several places and they have to adjust it and pull this way and pull that way and be sure it's all stretched tight and pulled tight in all the right places once it's all stretched and in place 
they hook the blowers up except they're not blowers i guess they're vacuum cleaners one on each end and we can start putting water in it and that'll take three or four days so here's the finished product obviously you're always changing things up i suppose but furniture the porch coming there but as far as the pool goes here you go so you step down into a tanning ledge there and then two steps go all the way across the pool down into the six foot deep end got the robot in there cleaning a few things up and the furniture's laid out like this because we have that leaf cover it's a net that goes over to keep all the leaves from going in the pool so i just pulled it across to put the robot in there this morning and we're about to take a sample of the water in to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do and all the chemicals are in balance but we are very very happy with the pool how it turned out we've all been sitting out here we've had dinner out here several nights and uh, just already enjoying the pool and can't wait to get all the porch and fireplace well not fireplace but the grill and all that built in and everything we're gonna do out here so can't wait for everything else to come in but there's your pool and everything around it thanks for watching if you haven't already click like and subscribe